found my perfect sound. Can you see the fire in my eyes? Bitches burning now. Lightning in a bottle. I think I just found my perfect sound. Can you see the fire in my eyes? Bitches burning okay. now. Right for a good one, Ed. What's it gonna be this time? What's up? It's first choice fantasy. Gosh, Brandon's baby. giving me a headache, dude. You do not want to listen to his running back starts, but if you want to, <laughs> you can if you want to. But we do have running back starts and sits, and wide receiver <laughs> starts and sits. But we have six of each position start, six of each position sit. And you should listen to four of the six, I would say, for each thing, um, being mine and Alex's. Uh, Cannon's driving me crazy right now. Uh, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, by the way, real quick. But uh, last week we did pretty decent. Oh, uh, seven and two on Alex's part, seven and five on my part, six and six on Brandon's part. Um, yeah, decent wow. week overall. And uh, this week's going to be much better for me and Alex compared to Brandon. Um, <laughs> he already highlighted his green. He's saying they're both going to hit. All right. So, <laughs> matter of fact, Brandon, just kick us off with your running back. Yeah, yeah Brandon, you, you can go first. Get it out of the way. Everyone's going to click off the video. J.D. McKissick <laughs> is going to be a start this week against New Orleans. He is just – he's the game saver running back. Uh, Antonio Gibson is – he's hampered. He's Trash. hurt. He's, he took a, a shot to the ribs late last game, and I think he had a – I think he had like a sore calf or something like that. He's a little banged up, and – I think this game against New Orleans is actually going to be somewhat close because uh, both teams are kind of around that same area of, like, I don't know, good slash bad, I guess. I don't know. Uh, my next start, this one, I this one's a solid start. It's going to be Michael Carter. No. I'm going after it. These two games are two bad, two bad teams facing all gonna i mean these players are gonna have some action especially michael carter he's been used as the starter so far uh this season going against atlanta so two bad defenses two bad offenses uh you know there's there's opportunity for these low level players to actually pop off and michael carter's one with an unknown potential i guess uh, so I think he's going to be a start against Atlanta. When you're saying McKissick had a sore calf, I legit, I mean, Gibson, I legitimately thought you were about to say that this man had a sore throat. He's got a sore throat. <laughs> a sore throat. He's got to sit out the week. Yeah. He's got Can't his fingernails are busted up. Uh, he's, he's got a cut well, on his he right hand. In, I, heard he in the office. I heard he was in the office when uh, the feds raided the office. He probably got a riot shield to the gut. He's, he's <laughs> <shaking it. laughs> All right. Well, in moving on. Tell us about your star I'm... studded starts, Ed. Oh, me. It's my time. It's my time to shine. You, you're going for right. these are just false narratives running backs, aren't they? No, well, no, they're not. So oh. this week. After last week, you might be a little sketched out by Mr. DeAndre Swift, but don't be sketched out. Start him this week because he's going to have a good game against the Vikings. He he is getting more snaps. He just didn't get the touches last week because they weren't really carrying the ball that much. Dan Campbell said he was going to get some more touches. and uh, ramp. He didn't say get some more. He said he's going to ramp it up, didn't he? He said ramp it up. I thought they said he was going to get more touches, but either way, he's a liar. Yeah, he got less touches, but he got more he got snaps. Less. So <laughs> they wanted to they want they're definitely gonna want to get him more utilized because I mean he is their best player, I would say. By on far. Team. Yeah. Um when he gets the ball in his hands, he's going, he's doing something special. So he plays the Vikings this week in the dome. It's gonna be safe for uh Garrett Goff. He's not gonna lose the ball, you know, like wet hands type thing. But uh it's just a it's a bounce back matchup. He's gonna be the RB1 this week type thing. Um so start him. Next, we got Alvin Kamara. You should start. <laughs> No, seriously, you you have to start him. He's probably gonna be running back one this week. But on to real life things. Real life things. We got Mr. Chase Edmonds lighting up the league. There What's happening with that? What is up with that? Last good. week he had ten yards he's per carry. Well, ten yards per carry. It's absurd. It's but um, yeah, he's getting good tw- amount of t- uh, targets too. Oh yeah, he's like a yeah, he's yeah, an actual he's been like, receiver. Off with that. Very neat. Very neat. Um, they did run the ball a lot last week. James Conner also got a decent amount of carries. Uh. 
Chase Edmonds not really getting the goal line work like that, but I do think that uh, the receiving work, like you said, helps a little bit. And the fact that he has been getting more cut, more carries, more snaps, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I really didn't know where else to go here because we listed, uh, what, 12 running backs and can't really pick the top 10 running backs. So kind of left me in like purgatory. So I feel you, Brandon, on the J.D. McKissick um, pain of having to select him instead of choosing Kenny Gainwell, who he originally had. So feel that one. But, uh, yeah, Chase Edmonds probably much – more worthy of a start than Jamie McKissick. That's it for me. Alex, what are you thinking? Well, I'm going Damian Harris at Houston because, as I said in the last and or next video, depending on how this comes out, um, they're going to beat the crap out of Houston. I mean, Belichick eats rookie quarterbacks alive. So they're going to be running the ball a lot, and that means Damian Harris is going to be running the ball a lot. And then I got Zach Moss because whether you like it or not, Zach Moss for the rest of the season is going to get 12 carries, 15 red zone carries, and a touchdown or two per game. I concur. That math doesn't even have to make sense. It's just he's fresh out the inactive and into the end zone. That's why. And uh, with (laughs) that, Devin Singletary, bye, bye. We are back to last year. Bye. Sorry. Like, I feel bad for the guy. He gets to work up until the end. And then they're like, all right, let's bring in Zach Moss. Like, I thought, like, wow, you know, something might be going on in week one after that. You know, Moss and active Singletary just in there having a great week. And <laughs> it's like they were like, nah, we, we have Zach Moss back in there. So it's, it's tough for Singletary, but, you know, it's just the way the cookie, crum- cookie, cookie crumbles. Yeah. Cookie crumbles are pretty Either good. Either way, he's, he's a sick. And then I've got, Melvin Gordon, you should maybe tread lightly with this one. I think in our history, we're like 0 and 15 sitting Melvin Gordon or some stupid shit like that. Pretty much every time one of us says anything bad about him, he scores twice. So he probably oh, yeah. do that. But at Pittsburgh, I don't know whether it's Teddy or Drew, but it may very well be Drew. And if it is, that's that's pretty sketchy, especially given that their receiving core is like rocked right now. Melvin Gordon, he slipped a little bit in snaps to Javante Williams last week. It's not a huge concern yet, but it's there. It's coming, and I just – you might have to start it, but that it's going to be a tough game for them. You should be prepared for poor outing. Pick up J.D. McKissick instead and start him over yeah. Melvin yeah. Gordon. You're going to have to. No, don't do it. I or didn't actually Kenneth mean that. Gainwell. was sarcastic. Can I game you're about to trade you, McKissick. You're he to. sprouts in those high-scoring games. Maybe like McCaffrey for McKissick and like a receiver, T. Higgins. He sprouts. He doesn't blossom because he's a rookie. That really comes next year. But, you know, it's, it's a sprout. <laughs> well, who you know, who's sprout? dead in the water? Oh, not, sprout. <laughs> not sprouting is fucking Miles Gaskin. He really is fucking dream. let me down, man. The elements around him are just killing him. They're making him cold and very dry. Yeah, he's dry cold and, and alone. <laughs> Well, he's not alone. Okay. No, he's very, he's in a very popular spot. Yeah, if anything, he's, he's, there's actually too many people around him. They're exactly. out there taking his work. <laughs> Stepping there's on so him. many guys yeah. around Miles Gaston <laughs> where he's just, <laughs> just is this he can't get enough shine. He had 23 snap percent snap share. Two okay. carries. Now it's Tampa Bay. He had no targets. <gasps> he had no targets. <laughs> I sue him. But <laughs> this week it's against uh, the Buccaneers. So it's like the best rush it's crazy what happened to you know what happened to Gaskin because I feel like he had solid yards per carry. He wasn't even running the ball that much. He he's a solid receiving back, but yet they're they're setting him. I I like the med, but and like the idea of Malcolm Brown, but. I was thinking under the impression that like Miles Gaskin would have to get hurt first, not for him to just be set aside like a like a afterthought, like a used lampshade. Personal connection. Brandon traded for Gaskin, our dynasty, like a few days before the season started. So Brandon is extra. Yeah, because every single one of my running backs got hurt. Take a page out of Brandon's books. Check a page out of Brandon's book real quick. Don't make emotional decisions when doing start sits because it leads it leads to bad times just that's it just always get that you out there. yeah 
All right, who else you got? You think you think I got Shaq Kareem Hunt. Hunt? There's no emotional attachment behind this. Uh, it's just a good defense. The Chargers terrible against defense. the run, though. Yeah, well, not this week. <laughs> not this week. <laughs> not this week. <laughs> not this week. Uh, Josh Jacobs didn't have a good week, so Derek Carr. He's so good. Josh Jacobs is super freaking good. He so just had a little over three good yards per carry. <laughs> Who's so good? Super freaking good is Mr. Joe Mixon lately, but not after he got hurt a little bit. And if yeah. he does play, you should probably still sit him because he's a little bit banged up. He's playing Green Bay, whose run defense is not too bad, but he might not be too good. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah. they might they might try to attack the Packers through the air after losing Jai Alexander. Uh, Alexander Salamander is what I said out loud. But I meant Alexander. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Joe Mixon. Um, they have a – more than capable backup, I would say. I don't necessarily like him, but they seem to like him. Smudge Piran. And also Chris Evans was getting receiving work over Joe Mixon, uh, I think like week three, week two, Weird. something like that. So it's a little strange. So uh, possibly go a little committee here, seeing as Mixon's banged up. Big prize possession over there with all the money he's got. And uh, matchup where they might have to pass a lot to stay in the game. I'll maybe predict, but uh, that's, that's more prediction-based. Just don't start Joe Mixon just because he's banged up solely. Um, next. Leonard Fournette against Miami. Um, this is probably a bold take. Possibly not really bold, but he had 20 points last week. Oh no, no, he didn't have 20 points. That's a reach. He had 20 carries last week, and uh, don't see that holding up. 85% snap share. Most he's had with Tampa Bay probably since like the playoffs. But it's you know I don't see that happening again. And uh, Ronald Jones got put in on the goal line, get a touchdown. Maybe Ronald Jones. Maybe this Ronald Jones game. Against Miami, they're going to be up a little bit, so maybe they do run the ball a little more. But uh, probably not. Miami has him. been very bad on the ground, so maybe this is the Ronald Jones game that might save you. I like Ronald Jones, so give me That's Ronald Jones game. this week, huh? Oh, start I Ronald hope. Jones. Okay, let's type that. Right. Alex, give me Ronald Jones. <laughs> All right, Alex. I just wanted you to say yes. I apologize. How do I have to say whether I like it's? It was like I had to choose to unmute myself after Brandon gave me the permission to. That's not. Even, that's cruel. Come it's on, like Brandon. They let you out of jail. They just throw the keys at you. They're like, unfucking <laughs> unchain yourself. Oh man. I don't even know. Right. What you, what We're on the wide receivers now. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. If you want him, come get him. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders at Kansas City. I, it's a thing. It's, it's a thing. Some of us thought it might be a thing in the offseason. It's a thing. He's like the two-ish, three-ish. I don't know, but that's a passing offense. They're going to put it. Kansas City is the worst defense in the league by far. So, you know, Sanders start. Uh, and then I'm going to go James and Crowder uh, at the Falcons, given that they're at London. Um, if you watch the last and or next video, as I've mentioned before, I got Zach Wilson as a start, so it's a logical conclusion that Jameson Crowder, who is apparently going to get targets from him, is going to be my next start. And the man just produces. So I like him this week. Well, I'm going to piggyback off you real quick, if you don't mind, Brandon. I'm just going to like toss you down the hill like Humpty Dumpty did. Um, I'm going with another Buffalo wide receiver. Uh, the opposite. I was going to take Emmanuel Sanders, but then you know, I looked at the document, the word document that we used Google for, but I looked at that one, and you had Emmanuel Sanders. So I had to go with Trailer Park Boy himself, self-proclaimed uh, artist of the year. Uh, also, Alex's favorite man from 2020. <laughs> Never forget uh, that time. Bring Cold him back. Beasley. That no. man ain't my king. Get him the fuck out of here. Name. That's a shit. <laughs> He's a star for me this name. week. I was right uh, with that. That's what kills me. I was, I was fucking right. <laughs> was right. I was very things. right. The legacy of King. I don't even want to be right Beasley. about it. All right. Cole Beasley. Cam Beasley. No, King You've got Beasley. the same explanation as I do. Who's your other star? 
My other start is uh, AB against Miami. So this is what my thought process was. I did look into some numbers, and I like I like to let the numbers kind of manipulate me a little bit. And it's not fair to me as a human being to let these things take my life over and uh, force me in a certain direction. But yeah. maybe I could also manipulate the numbers to make them look better. So what I took away from these number searchings, uh, I looked at pace of play, which Tampa Bay is like, top three in every single category as far as with the lead neutral game script without the lead, et cetera, et cetera. So they're running plays at a very rapid rate in the NFL compared to other teams. You got Miami who uh, also I think they're about middle of the pack, but uh, whenever they're behind, they're probably like middle of the pack, maybe top 10 type shit. So a lot of plays can be ran. Um, also when I think Tampa Bay's passing like the highest rate in the NFL in both in all types of situations. Right. So they're passing a ton. Um, and Leonard Fournette just got a lot of work last week, and I had Leonard Fournette to sit. So as a result of me sitting Leonard Fournette, I have to go with the same possibility, maximize my outcomes, start A, B, so I could possibly hit on two things right there. It's simple as that. But, uh, yeah, I, I do like A, B. He got, what, nine targets last week or something like that on, like, 56% snap share. Uh, yeah, his, his opportunities are very, very, very often, so uh, I'd be comfortable starting him. Against Miami, nonetheless, as the wide receiver, two on the team. Solid, solid. Uh, I'm going with uh, your lover boy, Jacoby Myers. Hey, can you chill? And matter of fact, can you – yeah, never mind. Yeah, you want me to speak the, the truth. Speak the gospel. Jacoby Myers has been – yeah, Jacoby. Uh, he's been – you know, he's been out on the field for like – over 90% of snaps uh, so far this season. And he he also has had a ton of targets. Nine week one, six week two, 14 week three, and week four he had 12. So those targets aren't going anywhere but his hands. And this week against Houston, uh, I, I think it's going to be a pretty – good game for the Patriots offense and someone on that offense is going to be scoring. Uh, It could be multiple players or it could be Jacoby Myers. You guys hear me? No. I don't even know this audio is going to pick up. Damian Harris. Yeah. Jacoby Myers first and then Damian Harris. No, they're not going to be throwing the ball. They're going to want, want Mac Jones to get some good reps. And nah, they're going like to want practice him to get his practice hand in the ball off, make sure he doesn't fumble it. They're big into that. Who else you got? Uh, this is one of my favorite wide receivers in the NFL right now. It's the best question all against Tennessee. Uh, I said uh, on the last episode about Dan Arnold being uh, – going to pick up some more targets because of DJ Chark's injury. Uh, Same goes for Chanel. The Titans defense is stinky. Not very good. Part two. (laughs) Golly. Stinky part two. Uh, So, yeah, it's not very good in Tennessee on their defensive side. I think LaVisca's going to have a solid game. Yeah, so you're lowering your range of outcomes, but I like it. You're being very conservative. Either you're 0-2 or you're 1-1, I would assume. It's fair. All right. I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. Receivers, uh, I'm going first. I'm sitting Brandon Cooks, despite my argument against sitting Brandon Cooks in the past, considering his target share. This one's scary because it's New England, and we've been over this. They're they're not very nice to rookie quarterbacks. I think Belichick is gonna it's gonna realize that Cooks is like the guy, and they're gonna bracket his ass, and it could be a rough day. Also, sitting Allen Robinson. I don't know what is going on. There, right? Like my man's getting like did Mooney have like a higher snap percentage than him? Yep. Last week he's like losing. I don't know what's going on there. I just I I would be with the uncertain first of all, Vegas has an underrated front seven. They got a good pass rush. They're probably gonna make fields life difficult for Andy Dalton, if that's a thing. That would almost make me more worried, but He's just he's, – he's hard to trust for me right now. I would maybe leave him on the bench. Yeah, you're going to leave uh, – I wouldn't trade him. You're going to be getting pennies on the dot. Pennies. Trade for him. Yeah, you for him. But keep in mind that offense could continue to suck, but he is Allen Robinson, so he should show up eventually. 
Anyway. Yeah, yeah. they're going to leave Oda Beckham Jr. on the bench. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> last, <laughs> shit. All right, all right. Yeah, First last team. week, just... Coming at the Browns. I, I, I give credit to the man, finally. And I just doesn't show up for me so probably this week he'll probably you know go off and this have is, a fantastic game, Dylan but, Wood, just, but on just paper against. on paper it's going to be a tough matchup uh this defense great against the the, the pass uh I just think Odo Beckham Jr. being one of the only guys there against such a hard defense he's going to be hyper uh, watched over and his opportunities are going to be limited. Uh, my second sit is going to be Juju Smith Schuster against Denver. Again, this is a really tough matchup on defense. Denver's defense is great, and uh, ben. ben Roethlisberger is not great. Uh, he's what he hurt his ribs or something like that, or maybe that's just something they're saying. Work. Uh, but yeah, Juju's gonna it's be like, set this like week. Fossilized. Juju's gonna be set this week, and uh, thought about combating that one, but uh, I'll let you breathe this time, Mister Sir, and I'll go with wide receiver that uh was top two before Monday Night Football, well before Week Four in general. Mike Williams of the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh. You kind of the real Mike Williams kind of came out to play last week, huh? What did you say? The real situational deep ball specialist type of uh, what's the word? What is the word? Volatile Mike Williams came out to play last week or Monday night, which was tonight or yesterday night. I'm freaking rambling. I got 0. 0.9 points, I believe, or something crazy. And uh, I see, I I would like to say I've seen that coming because I don't – I mean, a touchdown every single game is a little bit absurd. And, He's not going to uh, be the second overall receiver for the whole season. Exactly. But, and with and with very extreme well, highs come very extreme lows. And this is another back-to-back game, very extreme lows. Probably question him now. He got point nine points after putting up 15, 22, 14, whatever it was. <laughs> Sit him uh, very comfortably against Cleveland because uh, – do you think it's going to be a relatively low-scoring affair in this game? And, uh, yeah, obviously Mike Williams won't get a touchdown in this situation. So it is what it is. Uh, next is going to be wide receiver. You probably don't even have your team. But uh, whoever does have him on their team and is debating on starting them, probably in a deep league. And he was a name. He was a relatively known name last year. It was Curtis Samuel. Uh, came back from a groin injury. Played like 40% of snaps. Um, playing the Saints. Saints are literally the lowest of all teams in pace per play. So that's going to be less pass attempts, less plays in general for Washington, likely. Um, and I think the Saints are going to blow them fuckers out. So, uh, yeah, simple as that. Stay Curtis Samuel yet again, if you even have him on your team. Well, if they blow them out, wouldn't you say they would need to uh, pass the ball some more? No. Passing, passing well, that's what he means by more. blow them out, that they're not going to have it. They're not going to have any pass attempts. All right. Best running back. Best Fair running back is Alvin Kamara. James Robinson. Ooh, cool. I like it. All right. Best receiver. I'm going Devontae Adams. He's going to have his say, first or... multi-touchdown game in Cincinnati. Did you say you're running Miller. back? Yes. Derrick Henry. Okay. said real yeah. quick, boys. I heard that part, and then I, I heard Ed answer. All right, I'm All right. going Calvin Ridley against the Jets. D freaking Hop is going to put up like 30 points this week. Swear on <laughs> it. D freaking Hop. And then like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hop away, but don't hop too far. Watch the other episode, quarterbacks, tight ends, you need some advice. Comment your comments if you need advice. And check out betting episodes because we make money for y'all. I made money this weekend. Make money with me. Get with us. First choice podcast. We're signing off. Hotty freaking earth, huh? Just don't pick the ones that aren't going to work. Yeah. Later. The bad ones. <laughs>